in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed god Let's give him praise and thank him. Ale shaleko sabrande kesia. E shaleka subra haske de ba. Embra sati ke beleko shala cross kapina bahasia. Shale barus kadi shalia branda skodia. Krada gata balako shade ba dosiata. Ratu zasi gatela shala sabrondos ko paratus kafea sada balakusiata manta prastos katela katosh kafriga de balaso de kebele keta posiata ne kasha de pras katina barando se de kebele kusiata baratusiata shebrandi kabaraku sasi kebele doshila katavya tapada we bless you spirit of the living god. Help us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Apostle, thank you again and your lovely wife. It's an honor. Please be seated. Amen. Yesterday, we began to discuss a few very serious things that relate to enlargement, understanding the realm of the spirit. And just a quick recap, um, we discuss how that in our walk with God, we are given the liberty to approach the matters of life and destiny, either from the path of the natural man or the path of a spiritual man. And we said that a spiritual man is one who has submitted to the supremacy of the word of God and the influence of the Holy Spirit. These are the factors that turn an individual from a natural man to a spiritual man. Hallelujah. And then we established the fact that the realm of the spirit, according to Hebrews 11 and verse 3, that the things that manifest come from the realm of the spirit. So how that addressing things only from the physical realm is a total waste of time. That there is a technology that for everything that manifests physically, it must have a parallel from the realm of the spirit. Failure, success, defeat, speed, delay, doesn't matter what it is. Hallelujah. And that our authority in this kingdom is empowered from the realm of the spirit. And that the earth itself has its foundation from the realm of the spirit. That the part of the earth that is manifest to us physically here is not the only path that exists. There is a spiritual dimension to the earth. Hallelujah. And so that if we want to experience growth and enlargement, which we establish, by the way, that is consistent with the will of God. We saw scripture after scripture that it is the will of God for us to increase, to enlarge, and to experience the fullness of his life and even the fullness of victory. But we did agree that advancement in this kingdom is knowledge dependent. Ephesians 4.18 says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. 4.18 418 hallelujah so in as much as we have access 
to the life that has been given to us in and through Christ. Ephesians 4, 18. Okay, thank you. The Bible tells us very clearly that this is a kingdom that is knowledge dependent. That means if you do not have sufficient knowledge, in fact, please look up. It, it is not just knowledge that is needed, it is knowledge enough. There are times that we know, but not enough to command the victory that we desire. First Corinthians 8 and verse 2, please give it to us. And then we'll get into the teaching this morning. First Corinthians 8 and verse 2. I'd like you to read it when you see it projected. Ready? One to read. The key expression, as he ought to know. That means there is a standard. For a student who fails the exam, he does not have to fail all the questions to fail the exam. He only just needs to not pass enough. And even what he passed does not count to the overall. He still failed. Are we together? If you have 10 questions and you get two and fail eight, you didn't score zero, but you still failed. That means if they are to categorize you, the person who did not write the exam and you who failed will still stay at the same place. It is dangerous to know little. He knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. The light in your phone is light, but not light enough to swallow up the darkness in this room. So if this room were in complete darkness and you put on your little phone, we would see that someone has his phone there, but not enough to give us light. You need high level spiritual illumination. High level. The stadium kind of spiritual illumination that can turn every darkness to light. May that be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we began to look at the factors yesterday that are responsible for enlargement and increase. Having established the fact that increase is God's will for us in Christ. The first we said was the seeing eye and the hearing ear. Please do well to get the teaching if you were not here yesterday. The seeing eye and the hearing ear. Hallelujah. It matters that we see well. In Genesis chapter 13, when you read from verse 14 to 17, the Bible says in, verse, in chapter 12 that God called Abraham from Ur of the Chaldeans to lead him to a place of destiny, a land that he would show him, and there were blessings that were connected to his obedience. Are we, are we together? Yes. And the Bible says that Lot, on hearing, that Abraham now had a covenant with God. The Bible says Lot went with him. Now re realize that God did not call Lot. God called Abraham. But Lot said, I will go with the one who is called. And by the time we get to chapter 13, they were so blessed and increased, we did not even know who was called and who followed again. Because they had, listen carefully. Thirteen and verse 14. The Bible says that they got to a place where there was such increase, such abundance, and there was trouble now between the men of Abraham and the men of Lot. And Abraham said, listen, we be brethren, let there be no strife. He said, choose wherever you see that you prefer go. If you go this way, I will go that way. If you go that way, I will go this way. Lord should have been afraid. What is on you that makes every direction bless you? That's the question Lord should ask Abraham. And the Bible says, watch this now. I'm just showing you the power of the seeing eye and the hearing ear. The Bible says, Lord looked towards Sodom. That was where his eyes took him to. 
and he settled near Sodom. The next time we'll hear about Lot, he was crying for help in the midst of Sodom. Are we together? Hmm. Now, when Lot separated himself, the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lot separated from him, lift up now, not your feet, not your hands. The first thing that must be lifted up for your destiny to be lifted up is your eyes. Even when your feet cannot lift, even when your hands cannot lift, let your eyes. He said, from where thou art, not where you need to be. It's all right where you are, but lift up your eyes from the place that thou art, northwards, southwards, eastwards, and westwards. Verse 15. For all the land which thou seest, not all the land that is available, the land which thou seest, to thee I will give it all the businesses which thou seest, all the opportunities which thou seest, all the realms and the dimensions which thou seest. Listen, your portion is not what is available. Your portion is what you see. All the land which thou seest. This is a prophetic word for someone. There are many things available, but the one which thou, the realm in the spirit, the realm of the anointing, the realm of grace, the realm of excellence in ministry, which thou seest. The prayer life and dimension which thou seest. The level of excellence in the word which thou seest. Crying for what is available is not a wise spiritual approach. You cry for what you see. That is the assignment of revelation. To make you see what God is saying. Because faith is predicated upon your ability to see what God is saying. Hmm. Hallelujah. So... When you see, then you'll be able to make giant strides consistent with that which you have seen. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll jump into our discussion for the night. Hmm. In Numbers chapter 13, the extended reading is 1 to 33, but we'll read the first three verses. Then we'll jump to verse 33 just to establish this. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, uh-huh. It says, send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I will give unto the children of Israel, of every of their tribe, of the tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, everyone a ruler among them. Verse 3. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. Are we together? Now, go please to verse... Okay, let's see 25. Let's start from 25. 25, just to get the perspective. They returned from searching the land. Remember the promise that God was going to give it to them? 26 now. A quick reading. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and all the children of the congregation... Of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh. They brought bad word to them and they showed them the fruit of the land. Next verse. And they told them and said, We came unto the land whither, let me use this, whither thou sendest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, 29. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. 
the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the seaside. No land is empty. We're coming there. Caleb, oh dear. Watch this now. Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are able to overcome it. Last three verses. But the men that went up said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report. What's it called? An evil report. Any report that downplays God's ability is an evil report. They brought an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people we saw, 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 not all the people there, all the people we saw are men of great stature. Let's read 33 together now. 33. One, two, read. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come out of the giants. And we were in our own hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on we were not in god's sight not in satan's sight we were in our own sight as grasshoppers This was the conclusion of our vision that we were like grasshoppers before them. No matter the only kind of prayer you can pray for this kind of a person is the prayer of mercy. Because this one is already defeated. We were in our own sight. Hallelujah. A man was going into a land for the first time and when he stepped into that land he met a farmer the farmer was farming and he said um gentleman good afternoon the farmer replied good afternoon sir he said i hear that this land is a wicked land with all kinds of evil things is that true and the farmer kept quiet and said you are right and the man walked through a few hours later, another happy, vibrant man came and said, Good afternoon, sir. And the farmer said, Good afternoon. And he said, I hear this land is a beautiful place with all kinds of opportunities. The farmer kept quiet for a few minutes and said, You are right. And the man went in. So for every one of them that came with their perceptions, the farmer said, You are right. It is the assignment of vision to select what is consistent with what God has said. In the same land where there was killing and destruction, there was still prosperity and increase. Your vision is an editor. It can edit away that which is inconsistent with the word of God and create a picture for you that equals victory. The seeing eye and the hearing ear. That was a recap of yesterday. Let's get into today's teaching. The warfare dimension of enlargement. Hmm. Light of the world, you step down to, into darkness. Will you open my eyes? Let me see. That's my prayer, Lord. You're the light of the world. You step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see. Can you repeat that part? Open my eyes. Open my eyes, let me see. Two more times, let it be a prayer. Open my eyes, 
Let me see. One more time. Open my eyes. Let me see. Amen to that prayer. In the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 8 from verse 22. Jesus. It is true that God gives us territories, physical territories, spiritual territories, financial territories. But the Bible is very clear as to the fact that there are no empty territories. So I am teaching you the spiritual technology that dislodges every enemy that is occupying your territory and grants you access to possess that which is yours. Are we together? Even the hearts of men was not empty when Jesus came to die. He needed the hearts of men. But the hearts of men were already full of evil. There was something he did to dislodge darkness and bring in light. Even God was exempted from what I'm teaching you right now. War is not a negative um, it's not generally an evil concept. War is simply a strategy that establishes dominion. Every time there is a contention over dominion, we see that there is war. And the idea of war here does not just mean carrying guns and killing. Are we together? One of the strangest scriptures in the Bible is, and there was war in heaven. You would think a place with so much dexterity should never have any reason for contention. It says there was war. The Bible is not afraid to let us know that there was war in heaven. So let's read Luke chapter 8 and verse 22. Follow very carefully. I'll read 22 to 25, then somewhere along the line we'll continue. The warfare dimension of enlargement. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, let us go over to the other side of the lake and they launch forth. Keep that scripture there. The Bible tells us the basis that it was their instinct and their desire to advance. This is Jesus making a profound statement. Thank God for the lands we have conquered, but let us go over to the other side. Are we together now? So understand the basis. This story is founded upon this knowledge. Their desire to go over to the other side. The Bible says, and they launched forth next verse but as they sailed he fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy a storm of wind with Jesus the son of the living God the very incarnate of the father desiring to go to the other side and the bible you thought where were the angels where were the ministering spirits we're talking about the son of god desiring to go to the other side and the bible says there came down a storm of wind next verse let's hurry up and as they came to him, they awoke him saying, Master, Master, we perish. And then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging water. And they ceased and there was calm. Now listen very carefully. The Bible is saying that Jesus was leading the people to the other side. There are many things that would not happen to you simply because you are not interested in going to the other side. There are many people who are free of challenges. It is not because you are free. It is because you are not moving. Hmm. 
There are certain challenges that are report cards. There are systems of attestation that you are in motion. If they did not desire to go to the other side, there would be no need for them to experience a storm of wind. It is not unusual to have challenges. Challenges many times reveal to you and confirm to you that you are on the path to destiny. It is not always that you are on the wrong path. Now listen carefully. Did you know that when they encountered this storm of wind, the same energy it would take to go back was the same energy it would take to continue. They were confronted by a storm of wind. Now listen. A storm is made up of two things. Number one, wind. Number two, water. Hmm. Are we together? The wind is the invisible part of the storm. And the water is the visible part. But they all work together to create that storm. When Jesus got up and he discerned that there was a storm, the Bible says the first thing he did was to rebuke the wind. Because the water was under the influence of the wind. The, the, the wind you could not see was what was making the water boisterous. Now listen carefully. You have to understand the formation of storms. There is always an invisible part to a storm. And that is the part that powers the visible part. There is always an invisible part to the job issue. There is always an invisible part to the health issue. There is always an invisible part. The Bible says the first thing Jesus did, he's teaching us how to rebuke storms. That every time you discern a storm, don't focus on the water. The water is only acting based on what the wind is making it do. The financial situation is only acting based on the wind, the spirit that powers it. And the Bible says Jesus rebuked the wind. When he rebuked the wind, then he rebuked the water. And the Bible says, they, the wind and the water ceased and there was calm. Now, the next verse, please. He said unto them, where is your faith? And they being afraid, one that saying to one another, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the water obey him. The winds and the water obey him. The winds and the water obey him. Are we together? 26. Be patient with me. I'm building something. 26. The next verse now. And they arrived. Hallelujah. Regardless the wind, they arrived. That is a powerful statement there. And they arrived. And they They arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. The Bible uses a very interesting term, they arrived. You would think that were the end of the story. They arrived. 27. Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you what happens when you arrive. <laughs> And when he went forth to the land, there met him a man out of a certain city which had devils a long time. I thought they arrived. Listen. Having gone through the storm of wind, the Bible even testifies that I arrived. I made it and then the next person to welcome me is a man full of devils no clothes no house living in tombs 
Is that how you greet somebody who arrived well? Where would I be if you left me? Where would I be? Where would I be if you left me? Now, watch this. Please do not miss what I'm teaching you. Open the eyes of your spirit. Let's go back to the story again and understand what the Bible is dealing with. Let us go over to the other side. Remember? Let us advance and enlarge and make progress. And then they get into the boat. And then they meet this mysterious storm of wind. Jesus rebukes the wind. Rebukes the water. There's calm. And the Bible says they arrived. And the first person to welcome them was a madman who had been there a long time. Verse 28. Let's rush now. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice. And he said, Jesus, of God most high, I beseech thee, torment me not. 28. For he had commanded, and Jesus cried out, Okay, 29 now. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. You notice that every time Jesus is dealing with issues, he starts from the spirit. If it's the storm, he started from the wind. If it's this man, now it was the spirit. He says, for oft times it had caught him and he was kept bound in chains and fetters. He broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness 30 and Jesus asked him saying what is thy name and he said legion because many devils were entered into him and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep and there was there a herd of many swine on the mountain and they besought him that he would permit them to enter into them and he permitted them Watch this. <laughs> then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake. Notice the first people to suffer as a result of the authority of Jesus was the business people in that land. It meant that they were excelling because of their fraternity with a spirit. The moment something started happening to the spirit, some people's businesses started going down. That means their businesses were thriving. The devils went out of the man and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it to the city and into the country be patient then they went out to see what was done and they came to Jesus and they found the man out of whom the devils were departed sitting at the feet of Jesus clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid 36 they also which saw it told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. We're reading to 40. 37 now. Then the whole multitude of the country of the gatherings round about besought him to depart from them. For they were taken with great fear. And he went up into the ship and returned back again. Listen. So what did he do? He said, let us go over to the other side. Went through all that labor. Met a madman. Healed the madman. Entered the ship. And returned back. Does that make any sense, Jesus? What are you teaching us here? Next verse. Let's finish up. Now the man whom the devils were departed besought him 
that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to thy own house and show how great things God had done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. The last verse now. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him. Listen. Now that you've read the story, let me explain to you. So Jesus begins his mission and says, let us go over to the other side. Are we still together? And as soon as they began, just help those under the anointing. As soon as he began the journey, the Bible says he met a storm of wind. He rebuked the wind, calmed the, 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 the water, and they arrived. And then he meets this man. Do you know that was the only man Jesus went to the other side to meet? all that labor to meet one man so that man represented the other side that was jesus's idea of the other side to meet a madman touch that madman and said i'm done now that you are free and the bible says that single man one of the synoptic accounts will say that he published it across a decapolis 10 cities that means there is a relationship between the storm, the spirit, the madman, and the deliverance of 10 cities. So what you called wind was the same spirit that was in the man. And because that man's destiny was the destiny of a deliverer, in the mind of Jesus, that man was equal to the city and he was what the entire journey the entire journey please listen to me listen to me so there are men who are equal nations there are men who are equal nations the same energy god would give in ministering to a thousand people five thousand ten thousand he invests that energy he risked his life and the life of the disciples only to go and meet a madman. My question is, couldn't he speak from where he was and said, madman, demons go. Why did he go through that journey, met the madman? Please listen. His desire was to save 10 cities. But he discovered that the destiny of the ten cities were captured in one man. That he did not even need to do any crusade. Now, the demons knowing before time, they searched for the person who had the mantle of deliverance over that city and they bound him. Listen carefully. That man's oppression was not normal. It was in his prophetic destiny to be an evangelist and to save 10 cities. And the demons intentionally bound that man. As soon as that man, for as long as he was bound, the Decapolis was bound. For as long as he was bound, is it possible that there are nations that are under siege because individuals are under siege? Listen, I want to teach you something very powerful and I want you to pay attention. How can a nation be bound in spite of the fact that Jesus is there? But one man. You see that the demons did not waste their time attacking everybody. No. Could it be that the attack in your life is revealing something? Why did the devil leave everyone in your family? help them please that out of 10 people in a family so this is what has followed your destiny why is it different with me why is it that others get a job and when it is now my turn uh -uh. hear me Please listen to me. If you do not understand what I'm teaching you, 
There are many mad men you see today, not mad in physically mad. There are many people in trouble today. Their trouble is not because they did any wrong, any wrong themselves. They have entered situations because the realm of the spirit has seen the end time role that they have to play in God's program. And so there is a, a launching of all kinds of attacks on them and their families. I'm speaking prophetically to you. I want you to listen. You see, there was a man who was born blind and they came to Jesus and said, who sinned? It is not always a sin problem. This is what I'm trying to point out to you. Who sinned that this man was born blind? Was it him or his father? And Jesus said, neither, but that the glory of the Lord should be revealed. It is not always a sin problem. Do you know why this is powerful? So that when you see people going through storms, you don't sit down and conclude that it's because they do not have faith. <clears throat> when you see the madman in Gadara, you do not even know that your own salvation in that city is tied to his destiny. Hallelujah. Please hear me. There are some of you right now, please help this lady. I just saw oil being poured on her head. Listen to me. I came this morning to raise warriors. There are people who must know how to walk in the established victory that is in Christ. Let us go over to the next business. Let us go over to raise our children. Let us go over to liberate this family from poverty and decadence. And the realm of the spirit responds to it. Things begin to happen in your life that you cannot understand. Are we together now? And then they get to the other side and look at Jesus. When Jesus saved the one person in his mind, the city was saved. He said, let's return. That means it is possible for God to come to South Africa because of just three people. And men of God, this is not a minister's conference, but let me give you a loving word of caution. Even if God gave you three members, find out which three are those members. Because you can look at only three members and say, I need more, not knowing that one member is equal to a whole region in South Africa. When the mother of Jacob and Isaac, I mean uh, Jacob and um, Esau, they said they were two nations, not two men. There are men that are not men, oh. There are men that are territories. They are systems. They are nations in themselves. Some of you here, you may not know why God seems to be meticulous in his training to you. Your family members can be careless with their lives. He will spare them. But for you, it is because there is a mantle. There is an unction. There is much that depends on your life. There are challenges that never happen to you except and unless you are going somewhere please sit down sit down first corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9 first corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9 please read with me everybody one to read for a great door and effectual is open unto me and there are there are few you see i told you yesterday 
there are certain doors that God does not open because the person who needs to pass through that door is no longer a businessman. The person who needs to pass through that door is no longer a preacher. You have to be a warrior to pass through that door. That door, once you enter it, is not for business again. It's not for preaching again. You must master the art of warfare, commanding victory. Ah, there's such an anointing in this place. Help those women, those two women. Please hear me. It says a great door. Every time you see a great door, don't just rejoice. A great door of business, a great door of ministry, a great door of opportunity, along with it are many adversaries nobody has to hate you since you are not doing anything nobody needs to talk about you since you are not making any mark it's not because you are nice it is because you are not impactful enough you must be trained to know how champions retain territories are we together now Now watch this. When it was time for Jesus himself to purchase back the hearts of men, even though he was the king of kings and the lord of lords, let me show you what he went through. Are you ready? Jesus himself is at the last supper with the disciples and then they drink of the cup, they eat of the bread and your Jesus is led to Gethsemane. The Bible says when he got there, he cried and cried and said, Father, if it be thy will, I want to make progress. My mission is to see that the entire world is saved. But let me show you the path of champions that many of you do not see. What you see is the glitz and the glamour. But I am showing you the pathway that leads to glory. There is no throne without a cross. Jesus Christ, he prayed three times, take this cup off me. Nevertheless, if it be thy will, not my will, but your will be done. You thought the father would say, I'm so touched. All right, no more death. He still continued. The savior of the world, watch this. The first fatal thing that happened to him was a betrayal from his treasurer. This morning thing again. A kiss that should be a sign of love and intimacy was used as a weapon of destruction. It is not only evil Satan uses to destroy. He can use good things. Managing the pain of being betrayed by someone you invested your resources to. Which is a sign of your trust. And Judas looked at him. But you ate in my conference. Yes. Do you know the pain? And then the same people who came for his conferences were putting a crown of thorn on his head. But I saw you. You ate of that five loaf. That's none of my business. You are going to die. Was taken before Pontius Pilate. He had the power to speak. And yet he remained silent. He was whipped 40 stripes save one i'm showing you how champions become this is a side you may not want to hear if you are talking of enlargement please listen carefully so that at the end of it you will know whether it's a journey worth taking hmm. and then that 33 year old man you know that he was hung without clothes the covering there that you see in movies is just because there are people of all age ranges watching there was no cloth there imagine the man who raised the dead imagine the man who fed many now becoming an object of mockery many people would have said i knew he used divination god had caught him now 
be careful when you conclude on people's journeys listen the only thing you owe people going through storms is your prayer don't speak in ignorance because you do not even know what season they are going through this is intelligence south africa can you hear me do not conclude that just because negative things are happening to people it means god is not with them no remember it is not always a sin problem sometimes it's a destiny journey jesus and they gave him this huge cross many of you are medical practitioners the life of the flesh is in the blood and at this point this man was bleeding every part of his body from head to toe i do not know the kind of excruciating pain pain spiritually pain emotionally pain spiritually pain physically and he carried that cross watch this now as he journeyed on that cross he looked at the woman with the issue of blood watching him but i healed you and she was not even there to help him he looked at jarius but i raised your son he said still go crucify him and among the many who were pointing their hands he looked at the woman he looked at the man he looked at all the people the tax collectors and they said let his blood be on they were speaking nonsense jesus was on his way to golgotha ladies and gentlemen and he was so weak the bible did not hide his pain with tears and blood he fell he himself could not even arrive at the cross jesus because at that point the holy spirit was not with him again the holy ghost had left him at gethsemane he couldn't die not with the holy spirit in him because the holy spirit represented the life of god he had to leave him that's why he came back after three days now this was jesus the man watch this now i want to show you the price to win this territory call your heart so that the next time you want more you need to understand that more takes stamina hallelujah and a man called simon of cyrene was instructed to come and take the cross i don't have the time to teach you but prophetically simon of cyrene was africa listen carefully simon of cyrene was a black man that was the only continent that said i will help you jesus now i love every other continent but listen everybody rejected him and one continent said can i help you to get to the cross i may not be able to die for the sins of the world but let me help you that is the reason why that helper is still the continent that will partake of the glory For if you partook of the sufferings of Christ, you must partake of the glory that follows. It is the reason why this is the season of Africa. Because we were the continent that identified with Jesus in his death. Now watch this. When Jesus got to that cross, you would think the people nailing him haven't seen him bleed. They would say, listen, just leave this man. He would die anyway. He had to die on the cross to be a cause. If he had died on the ground, his mission would be aborted because he needed to die on the cross because it is written, cost is he that hangeth on a tree that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles to the end that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That's what the Bible says. So they nailed him and he was in pain to make matters worse there were two foolish thieves by his left and right you don't want people speaking nonsense when you are in pain and the other guy who was a thief he now began to speak why are you here i thought you were a miracle worker shame on you you can't even help us and the other guy said you better keep quiet we are thieves we were caught stealing this man is innocent and he said this day you will be with me in paradise watch this 
Jesus Christ himself hanging on that cross, he cried, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani, Father, you have forsaken me, you have turned away from me. The Father looked at Jesus, and even the Father, as compassionate as he is, did not allow Jesus to be relieved of that pain, of that journey and that warfare. And then, the Bible tells us that he gave up the ghost. Life died. The king of glory died. You would think that was the end of it. Watch this. Now, Paul is given a picture of what happened after this realm. And the Bible says, because you see, when sinners die, they do not go to heaven. So since Jesus died as sin, he couldn't have gone to the Father. The Bible says he went to Hades, the place of the dead. Paul was shown this in his Pauline epistle. Are we together? And when he went there, he went in the strength of a man. He did not go assisted by the Holy Ghost. No. He went in the strength of man, just like Adam. And the Bible says the cohorts of hell were forcing him to bow. What is it about bowing? Bowing means acknowledging authority. To acknowledge Satan's authority. And the Bible says that when the legal claims of justice was made, because he said he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. Is that in your Bible? The moment the price was paid, your Bible, my Bible says, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them. Now watch this. When he shook off the demons and the cohorts of darkness, he went to Lucifer himself, who collected the keys from Adam, and he said, give me the keys. It's in your Bible. When he collected the keys, he said, I am he that was dead and now is alive. Revelations 1. And I have the keys. Then Apostle Peter now brought another dimension. He went to Hades, the place of the dead. And the Bible said he preached the gospel to the departed saints who were there awaiting this redemption. They died in faith, but they never had the opportunity to make that declaration. And when they believed him, he opened the prison gates and said, let's go. It's in your Bible. Now watch this. I can imagine the whole land quiet, women crying, others laughing, others mocking. Shame on Jesus. You wasted three years of our passion. We thought you were the one who would dethrone Herod, Caesar to become king. And then one morning, the Bible says, there was a noise an angel came and rolled away the stone and sat on it and the king of glory your king of glory watch this you would think when he was done with satan that was the end of it now it was time to return to the earth psalm 24 but the gates refused to open those gates and doors you see because Jesus was about to do something on earth that had never been done. Watch this. When someone leaves the earth, someone in the earth has to call him back. Are we together? That is the law. It has to be a human who calls someone from the realm of the spirit back. When Lazarus died, remember? It took Jesus the man. It took Ezekiel the man to call back life into the bones. Now, who was calling Jesus that he was returning back? So the gate said, no, we are not opening. There is nobody on earth who is calling you. That's why they asked the question, who is this king of glory? He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted ancient doors that the king of glory may come in. Now, listen, please. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. This is an issue of ownership because Psalms 24 verse 1 starts by saying the earth is the Lord's. The fullness. So it's, an, it's a contention for space and ownership. Watch this. 
please listen I don't want you to miss this the gates said we only open at the command of someone who is in the earth who calls because that was how God created it but now there is no man in the earth who is calling your name and there was a response to those gates he said this man is the Lord strong and mighty then he says the Lord mighty in battle mighty in battle and the gates open and he triumphed he walked back into his domain because if you are really the owner if it is yours you should have the power to go out and come in every other king who claimed land when he went out he could not come in but here is this other king the king of glory he went out of the earth of his own volition and returned back when he returned back he was alive by the spirit now watch this when he resurrected now he could be ascended to heaven so that that coronation service would now happen to him the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool are we together now the bible says that a name was given to him that name means an office this is how he got the name the name was his all the while but now it was his without man it's like you being a professor but because you are a professor alone you will strip yourself and go back to the elementary school and start again but this time around, you do not want the PhD for you alone. You want the PhD together with everybody you love. So that the day they give you a PhD, they see a PhD appearing in every other person's name. That's what Jesus did. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. If Jesus himself was not exempted from battles, that's the point I'm driving. I'm showing you all the things you thought is it that Jesus did not pray? Is it that Jesus did not fast? Is it that Jesus did not submit to mentorship? What was his sin that he went through these battles? It was not about a sin problem. It was about a destiny problem. I wish I can tell you that there is no warfare dimension to your destiny. I wish I can tell you that just when you want and if you can think correctly, you will suddenly stumble into wealth and abundance and anointing and glory and influence. But I would be lying to you. There is a price. The price for where you are going. Listen carefully. The price for where you are going is greater than the price you paid for where you are. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.